back to my channel. My name is Samantha and I am the Huga Stitcher. Uh, this is my YouTube channel that is dedicated all to cross stitch. What I'm extremely passionate about, I'm so thankful that I have this opportunity to be able to share this with all of you, with others who also love and are passionate about cross stitch. So welcome. <laughs> I'm really excited if you can't tell. Um, it is December and it is the most hugeling time of the year, if you didn't know. <laughs> uh, it's cold, right? Winter has arrived here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. That's where I'm from. And it snowed. We've had the plows come down our street already uh, this year. And it's cold. Uh, I just want to be inside, warm and cozy, with a candle, with the fireplace lit, twinkling lights, um, and cross stitch. <laughs> And most definitely my feet are up and I have a hot coffee or a hot tea or a hot chocolate on the go at the same time. That is Huga. Huga to me is all about home and comfort and warmth. And I hope that you are at home right now doing all of those things while you stitch and watch my channel. Um, I have a lot planned for you today. Um, we are going to go through some of the past um, projects that I've worked on. I also have a prize to give away from my last video that was a Halloween giveaway. Um, I also have some current works in progress that I can't wait to share with you. Also some floss tube mentions, some haul, and some upcoming plans in December. All right, so what do you say? Should we get right into it? First up, let's do the Halloween giveaway. So the wonderful Jessica from Otter Rose, you can find her on Etsy. She was so gracious and donated this bag uh, to give away to one of you viewers. It has a beautiful owl charm as well as fabric from Mad About Patchwork. And it has this adorable graphic on the back that glows in the dark. How fun is that? <laughs> And I forgot to mention on our last video that the in, on the inside, beautiful, adorable fabric, but also there is a really cute needle minder that also goes with the giveaway. So here it is, a little pumpkin and a bat with a hat on, so cute. So one of you um, are gonna earn this. And I did the draw today. It is using the um, YouTube random comment picker. And the lucky winner is Allison Kubeski. Congratulations, Allison. This bag is coming your way. If you don't mind sending me an email with your mailing address, and I will get this cute bag shipped out to you. <laughs> so her comment was, um, your fairies are gorgeous. I would love for you to show them once they are all framed. On it. <laughs> You got it, girl. <laughs> uh, she says that my memories of Halloween are vague, but I do remember one year my mother dressed all five of us kids as ghosts in white sheets. It must have been the year we all got new sheets on our bed. How cute is that? Thank you so much, Allison, for your comment and congratulations on the bag. And thank you again, Jessica, for the lovely gift. Um, going out to Alice. So I have a question here from Ezra. Uh, they were wondering if there are any plans of doing any in-person stitchings sessions at Lizzie B's. Lizzie B's is the local needle workshop that I work at here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And i um, excited to let you know that the store has moved locations uh, from the old one to the, to the new one. Most of you who already know about Lizzie B's uh, know that they have moved. And there is a beautiful spot within the house that is for the framer all the framing on the wall but there's a beautiful table right in the center of the room that I can envision you know us stitchers all sitting around with our projects um that would be amazing so I hope um, Barb will be able to announce some times and some dates soon coming in the new year maybe um that would be awesome so look forward to look forward to that Ezra thank you so much for your question so we are going to move on um to past finishes I have here for you today a Mirabilia cross stitch that I worked on a few years ago 
and it is called the Midsummer Night Fairy. So I finished this, mm, yeah, I want to say two years ago, maybe three. It's been a little while, but I'm excited to share it with you and show it off because it is really, really pretty. <laughs> oh, what do you think? So this fabric, I wish I could tell you uh, where I got it from and who hand dyed it. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> you know, back in the day, I didn't write these things down. <laughs> I did buy it from Lizzie B's, but I think there was someone who worked there at the time that did hand dyeing. Um, so yeah, I'm not really quite sure what to, I'm pretty sure it's a 32 count fabric, but man, does that ever look good? Oh, wow. So this, project was quite the challenge. I find that the older Mirabilia um, pattern, so let me just check what year did this one come out? Um, 1997. <laughs> so I find that the older patterns, the older Mirabilias are like harder to do. Am I the only one that thinks that? <laughs> Comment below if you've ever done one of these um, and done one of the newer designs. They're a lot easier, I feel like. Um, what caused the most pain for me <laughs> was this, her wings. It's all done in chronic and it's all beading. There's back stitching in there, but it's the most amazing part. Like I get it. I get why they do that um, for the effect. Like look at her skin behind the wing. Like that is the skin color with the chronic so that it looks like it's see-through. Oh, come on. Oh, so, so pretty. So those colors look amazing on there. But yeah, this is the Midsummer Night Fairy. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's really beautiful. Well, thank you so much for letting me share this with you. I know these are my past finishes, but um, without floss tube, I have no one to really share these with. You know, these took hours, months to complete. And to be able to share this with all of you who get it, it uh, brings me a lot of joy. So thank you. <laughs> um, next up, I have a past finish that I didn't stitch. <laughs> this is, um, let me actually, I wrote it down because I didn't stitch this one. My girlfriend um, from Vancouver, she stitched this, oh gosh, I don't know maybe 15 years ago. <laughs> Me and my best friend have been stitching since we were teenagers. Um, and this was, I think, her second memorabilia that she ever did. It's called the Garden Fairy, and it is um, an out-of-print pattern. But I remember when my friend was stitching this, she would comment, you know, all of the gems right in the middle. I think it's a fortune right there. There's a fortune in beads and gems right there. Can you see them? <laughs> Could you imagine trying to put that together? She's so talented. So I thought I would share this with you because my girlfriend um, mailed this to me because I was going to frame it and hang it in my daughter's bedroom. She has a beautiful yellow bedroom and I thought this would look amazing in it. And my girlfriend was like, I don't think I'm ever going to frame it. It's just sitting in a drawer. I was like, send it to me. But look, I, have no, I haven't framed it yet. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I need to get on that. I have so many beautiful pieces that need to be framed. And I think what my problem is, is I just think to myself, well, I could buy another project or I could frame something. So I usually end up going with buying another project. <laughs> but I do plan to uh, frame these and get them up on the wall um, so that we can look at them all the time. Yeah, this one's absolutely gorgeous. So there's that, those are the two past finishes. So I also wanted to share with you some of my um, Mirabilia patterns that I plan to stitch one day. So these are some Mirabilia patterns that are in my stash that are kind of, you know, go along with these fairies. I have one here that is called the Woodland Fairy. She's so pretty too. This is an older design. Um, this one came out in 2002. I think it's still available. I think I've seen it around. Um, I'm a real, I'm a sucker <laughs> for anything that's holding a wand. All of these fairies all have a, a wand in them and I absolutely love that. Whenever I see a pattern that has a somebody holding a wand out, I want it. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Another one that I have here also, beautiful fairy with a wand. This one's called the, Cart um, the Cottage Garden Fairy. 
So again, this is an older pattern, 2002, um, that I plan to stitch one day. These are some big projects. And some are newer uh, Mirabilia patterns that I have purchased. This one is called Muka. This is the last Mirabilia that I just got really, really excited about and I had to get my hands on, but like, oh my word, that's a lot of stitching. There's a whole bed in there and a beautiful, I think these are candles hanging from the ceiling and the wings. Look at her hair. Isn't that so neat? I really love this pattern. So I would love to stitch this one day. I also have a uh, Rapunzel. Have you guys seen these? Hey. So Rapunzel was from 2016. I haven't seen many people stitch this one. Look at her hair <laughs> in that braid. <laughs> um, and then the last one that I have here is called oh. Stargazer. What is it, Stella? What is it? <laughs> oh, that's my puppy dog. Her name is Stella. She's a chocolate lab and um, she's a busy, busy girl. <laughs> she might be a little bit bored right now. She's like, Mom, another floss tape? Ah. <laughs> um, so this is Stargazer from Nora Corbett, Mia Revilia. That's in my stash. Should I stitch this soon? What do you think? <laughs> uh, all right. And now it's time to share my works in progress. First up, we are going to talk about Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. I love this pattern so much. <laughs> I have completed the first block that was back in August. This was my August 1st start and uh, for my birthday. So um, I brought it out again in October and I was planning on finishing this whole block. And I'm very excited to let you know that I have completed it. And this fabric is 40 Count Legacy by Picture This Plus, which I think you will agree looks absolutely amazing on this. And I've been using um, DMC um, to stitch this. So there we go, block number two. Doesn't that look amazing? Uh, so I do plan on stitch, stitching on this throughout the year. Um, usually I am a seasonal stitcher. I like to stitch in season, but this is a really big project. And if I put this away till next Halloween, uh, and I only do two blocks a year, it's gonna take me years to finish. <laughs> so I am gonna um, continue on and I'm not sure if I'll do one block a month. I think that's a bit much, but uh, you know, take a month break and then bring it out again and stitch another block. They're super fun. This is a really enjoyable pattern to stitch. It's not complicated. Um, I love the colors and it's just really, really enjoyable. So if you're thinking, I've seen this pattern many times and I've thought about purchasing it, but it does look like too, too big or anything like that. Um, I encourage you to go get it. Go purchase it and get this in your stash and start stitching on it because it is really, really fun. <laughs> we, we can stitch it together, why not? <laughs> so there's that one, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. And All then, right, next up we have what I started on Halloween night. This is a Nor Corbett design. This is Luna. <laughs> Some of you saw I posted a picture on Instagram on Halloween night um, on display with um, a candy that is popular here in um, Canada called Smarties, which I thought was really cute. <laughs> Um, if you'd like, you can follow me on Instagram, the Huga Stitcher, um, where I, I usually try to post photos when I'm about to start a new project. I really enjoy, enjoy doing that. But here is my start. Not a whole lot to show you, but I did manage to get a few colors in there. I'm trying to do all the black first. So um, do you see the black part in her dress there? Because there is a lot of black stitching. But that's um, what I've been able to, to get through so far. I stitched on it for maybe three nights um, starting on Halloween day. So that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to do. And then next up, I have what I started on November 1st, After the Rain by Hello from Liz Matthews. So I'm stitching this with Misfit Stitches um, on YouTube and on Instagram. Um, I think she has completed nine rainbows so far. So I'm gonna show you what I did with mine. I chose um, colors that were from Shannon Bromo. Um, she had done her uh, rainbows all in skin tones. 
So here is what I have done. I have completed it. I have only done six, but I plan to frame mine just like how Shannon did in a little frame. Um, what do you guys think? So I had decided to do some beads in there. What do you think? A little bit of sparkle. <laughs> I love this one. I'm going to have this framed in just a little frame and probably put up on my mantle as a reminder. Um, we're also currently renovating our basement right now, and I do plan to have a beautiful stitchy spot with a chair and a lamp and be able to hang up um, my cross stitches on the wall. So that will definitely, definitely will be going in there. But I enjoyed this so much. Um, they stitched up fairly quick, quickly. I think it, this took me about a week. Um, and I really like how I added the, the beads to it. It adds a nice little touch, a little sparkle. So fun. <laughs> so I really enjoyed that. And then next I have been working on um, Owl Forest Embroidery, the Stitch Along Alice in Wonderland. So I have a lot more to show you. I have done quite a bit since the last video. This is what I've been working on probably the most. So last time um, I had completed this uh, centerpiece and a little bit of the house here with the, with the bunny ears. Completed that. And the next piece that came out was the Mad Hatter, this beautiful heart and the bird and the tree, a bit of this border here. And then last Friday, a new piece had come out again um, that was these flowers. So um, there's, I still have some work to do. I have to do another one of these on the other side. And because I started this stitch along late, um, I have been trying to catch up in between. So I did a little bit of page, this was page one, this was uh, page two, and there's another set of roses and flowers on this side. So once I get that piece done, then I can just keep moving, uh, moving along. I'm really hoping that um, these, this two space right here is, is blank and that they are the next two pieces to come in the stitch along so that it looks like I've done quite a bit. <laughs> Oh, there's only two other colors that I haven't used yet. I have opened up all of the colors um, except for two. So I'll show them to you. One of them is um, this beautiful pink and purple color that I was showing you last time. That is the cat, the cat that's right here. And this color will be so pretty. And then I have a mystery blue color that's really, really beautiful that I haven't um, stitched in the pattern yet. So I'm wondering where that comes in. What do you think? This is a really fun stitch, stitch along. I believe the last day, um, the last piece will come out January, early January, and then the stitch along will be finished that month. Um, and then I plan to keep going on, on with it, but I might take a little break after that and start the next, the other Owl Forest Embroidery, which was The Wizard of Oz. I believe it came out a few years ago. I have a beautiful fabric here um, and these gorgeous colors that I think will just be so, so much fun. So if you're interested coming this new year, um, if you have um, this pattern from Owl Forest Embroidery, it's a free pattern. You can download it um, from their website called The Wizard of Oz. Or if you already have this and you've started it a few years ago but hadn't finished it, let's stitch it together. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to getting these colors on this fabric, the Emerald City. Ooh, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> so um, on to the next section. I wanted to do um, a few floss tube mentions. So I'm going to start off with a floss tuber who has been around um, for about a year. Her name is Christy and she does a floss tube with her friend April and she is local here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I'm going to link her below. Her channel um, is called Sarsi Girls. And so something really fun happened to me while I was working. Um, I met her. I met Christy when I was working at Lizzie B's. So it was really funny as she came in and I, I didn't recognize her and she 
was shopping in the store and I went to help her and she seemed to know what she was looking for and and um, you know was having fun shopping in the shop and when she came up to the till to to pay um, she had mentioned that her you know introduced herself hi I'm Christy and I was like oh hi I'm Samantha nice to meet you and she said oh I'm Sarcy's girl on um, Instagram I was like oh and I started to think for a moment, I was like, oh, I wonder why she, she mentioned that. Like maybe we're already friends on, um, you know, follow each other on Instagram or something. I just couldn't put the two and two together just quite yet. And then uh, she said that she has done some designing in the past. And I was like, oh, do you have any pictures that you could show me? And she showed me a photo of the 2020 pandemic sampler, which I will insert a picture here. So Christy is an amazing designer. Um, she has multiple designs that she has done and all of them are stunning. And when she showed me the pictures, I, my, I was like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> you're kind of a big deal. I have seen people um, on Flosstube who stitch her patterns and I've seen her photos on um, Instagram and I was just thinking to myself, oh my word, this is so cool that we're meeting right now. <laughs> and um, I went home and checked out her Flosstube channel and liked and subscribed and I follow her now. So that was just a really cool little connection. So I'm really hoping that um, you will head over and like and subscribe to Sarcy's Girl uh, channel as well, because she's really fun. Her and April, they have a great sense of humor and um, yeah, they're just a really great company to stitch with. And I'm really hoping to get my hands on one of um, Christie's designs. Um, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet, but I'm definitely going to get one as well as she also has these um, in her Etsy shop. She has um, these floss drops that are really cute. It's like you have to you have to go check them out. It to, I'm not going to explain it because I, I don't do it as well, but it's kind of like giving your floss a hug the way that it wraps and goes through the hole. Um, and I wanna get some of those. Maybe I will order some to go along with one of her patterns and stitch it up and show you guys what I'm all talking about because that would be amazing. <laughs> okay, and also I wanted to talk about one of my other favorite floss tubers. Um, their channel is called Lost in Floss, Barb. You guys know her, you guys love Barb. Um, she's been around for three years and her latest episode she had a guest with her named Lisa. Um, Lisa has been stitching for 30 plus years and she jokes about the different her different um, stitching BK before kids and AK after kids. So a lot of the times when she was showing some of her um, samplers which are gorgeous like go check out the channel they go around her whole living room and her stitchy spot and show all of her amazing stitches over the years but she'd be like that's a bk that's before kids <laughs> i just thought that was hilarious um and lisa had a funny story she um was pan pam and steph you guys know pam and steph um she was their very first stitch harmony how cool is that? And she got connected uh, with a few stitchers local in her neighborhood and that's how she met Barb. So really, really cool story. Head over and watch their channel, watch their, um, their latest episode. Barb has recently retired and she had a retirement video as well. So go check that out. Also, I wanted to give Alexis from Alexis My Amazing World a little shout out. I have been enjoying her channel, uh, great content. She also has the most amazing personality that I really enjoy sitting and stitching with. So go check her out as well. So on to the next, we are gonna talk about some haul. I have done some a little bit of shopping. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I have recently picked up is a new lamp, a new desk lamp. Um, I have purchased this one because I'm a part of um, the Winnipeg Embroidery Guild and once a month we get together and stitch with each other and I have noticed a few people stitching at my table with one of these and I'm like oh you know it's such great lighting to have right in front of you while you're stitching so this is something I'm going to be using very very soon at our next meeting. Um, I have also purchased a new um, cute snowman this one's called the snowman the snowman wish you hmm. um, this one's by thistles i thought this was so adorable look at all those cute snowman 
<laughs> so I think I've got some fabric that I'm going to start this on. I had some leftover um, vintage country mocha that came with uh, Alice in Wonderland because it was a huge piece. So I think I have the right piece of fabric that will that will look great with those snowman. I have purchased um, the floss. It's um, the Gentle Art Oatmeal. So those, um, those are the snowmen. So I think that will look good on there. Or I might decide to go with something a little darker like they have in the pattern. Because I really want the white to pop. But this I think might look really, really cute. So that's something that I want to start soon. Maybe in the month of December. We'll see. Get that started at least. And then I also picked up the Christmas Cheer by Scissor Tail Design. I've seen a few people on Instagram and Facebook who have stitched this and it looks like it would be a quick, easy stitch. So I have the DMC flosses and I picked up some linen, um, just actually didn't, I didn't purchase it, it was from my stash, um, kind of a light creamy color um, that I think will look really cute with that. So the cute little reindeer, Christmas cheer, beautiful colors. I mean, you can't go wrong, it just screams Christmas, doesn't it? <laughs> and then I also purchased um, some more vintage country mocha because it is like my favorite fabric. So this one is a 40 count and I got a nice big piece. This is 36 by 27 piece of vintage country mocha, 40 count linen. Not sure what I'm going to stitch on this yet, but it's always great to have in your stash for the next project. So there's that. And then I've just purchased some um, items that will go along with my Q-Snap. I'm getting all set up, you guys. I have um, the Q-Snap already. This is an 8x8, and I got a grime guard to go with it. And I really enjoy using these. I think they're called, oh, what are they called? Spool something, school grabber or something. I can't remember. I don't remember what they're called, but those are really fun. Um, also, I have picked up the Needlework Book of Days, which I'm really, really excited to get going on this um, in January. I've never done um, one of these, so it's basically just a calendar. Um, and then you would write in like, okay, I worked on um, this project for 30 minutes or for, you know, a couple of days or I had a new start and these are the fabrics that I used so that you can keep track of your stitching all year long. And I've added to my Christmas list a sticker book. So I'm hoping that that will appear maybe in my stocking or under my tree on Christmas Day. We'll see. Um, but yeah, this is um, going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to keeping track of my stitches in the book of days. And then I have some plans for December. So I have um, the Nora Corbett Christmas Eve Carriers. This one is Dasher that I started in July. At the very beginning of my floss tube, I had shown this in, um, in all of my reindeers, actually. I think it was my introduction um, to floss tube. So I have a reindeer that is not quite finished. A lot of it is, I think all the stitching is done. Just need to put in all of the beads. I think I can finish that by Christmas, but we'll see. <laughs> and then I also have in my stash, something that I've been wanting to start for a few, few years um, that my girlfriend had purchased for me. This is from the Victoria Sampler. I believe this store is in um, Victoria. I'm not sure though. Um, but there's some beautiful ornaments there. My girlfriend has, I think she has completed this one. And to me, I think that's called Hardinger. I'm not quite there yet, you guys. <laughs> so I think I'm going to pick one that's mostly stitching. Maybe this one in the at the bottom says Merry Christmas. Or maybe this one here. I would love to get going on it. I have all of the beautiful silks and threads that go with it. Just got to get going the fabric all cut and ready so we'll see when I get back um, for my next floss tube we'll see what I have decided to start and what I've been working on over the holidays but that's pretty much it everyone um, I really hope that you haven't enjoyed uh, this episode 
thank you for keep coming back time and time again um, to visit with me and leaving your comments. Uh, it means the world. It has been so, so enjoyable. I hope that there is somebody out there who is watching this or has been watching Floss Tube for a long time and has thought, boy, I wish I, maybe I should do Floss Tube. I don't know, maybe I should do it. Um, because I, I have really gotten so much out of it. Um, first of all, it's being able to share with you all of my past finishes, what I'm working on um, with other like-minded people who, who get the world of stitching, who understand where all this passion comes from. Um, that part has brought me a lot of joy, but also just to be a part of the community. Before I was just a stitcher who um, would be watching Floss Tube, and I enjoyed that very much, but nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew I was out there um, enjoying and stitching along with them. And so that part has been really, really fun to have other um, stitchers, other floss tubers reach out and start conversations and build relationships, friendships with each other. So that is the part that has brought me a lot of joy. So I hope I am out here encouraging maybe even just one person to think about it a little bit more and make the decision to do it. One day I just was like, I announced it to my family. I was like, you guys, I think I'm gonna start my own floss tube channel. And they were like, okay, sure. I thought they were gonna be like, well, you're crazy. <laughs> but I decided, I just made a decision that I was going to do it and I just filmed the first one, threw it up there and saw what, and to see what happened. Um, and I'm so glad I did. So thank you again, everyone for joining in and watching uh, this episode. And until next time, happy holidays, everyone. Hopefully we'll see you uh, in the new year or maybe in December. Take care, bye-bye.